Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com. Welcome back to the video recap where we go over all of our opening, closing, or adjusting trades for just our members. Now today we only had one new opening trade in Tesla and we'll definitely go over that one, but had a couple closing trades as we start to kind of finish out June uh, expiration here this week. So went ahead and closed out CVS as well as Wells Fargo. That was even in July, but a good profit on that one and then SPY, which I wanna spend some time on because that was one that we hedged along the way. And I'm really, really excited about that one. We did still take a loss overall, but we actually cut our loss by more than a half because of the adjustment that we did. So to me, that again is the essence of trading. Let's go ahead and cover Tesla to start off the video tonight. And Tesla is just one that we saw a breakout early in the day in Tesla stock and really are just trying to play a little bit more of an upside move in Tesla in the overall market, hopefully. In, some of the big name stocks like Tesla and Google and, and Facebook, et cetera. We're thinking that those might start to rally here soon. And Tesla was really the first one to kind of break out here today. So we went ahead and bought just a very simple debit call spread for Tesla. And that was the July options. So July the 14 is for 2014. And then we bought the 210 calls and sold the 215 calls against the 210s. The net price is that we paid 265 for this $5 wide spread. Now, we always try to like to get uh, about 250 as far as a price in our spreads when they're $5 wide. So we paid a little bit over the price, but what's really interesting about the Tesla trade is that Tesla was actually trading above 215 when we actually entered this spread. Now, typically we like to enter one in the money option and one out of the money option. So basically straddling the market with our strikes. If Tesla is trading at 215, then we do 210 and 215. But in this case, when we actually entered this order, Tesla was already trading above 215. And so the better, or the reason that this is so good is because we actually get a huge, huge benefit to Tesla trading above 215 when we enter this trade. It was actually really, really good pricing on this spread. It was almost too good to pass up. And therefore, as the stock continued to rally today, we already saw a really good profits start to develop in Tesla. It's only a one lot spread again because it's a debit spread, so we don't know where this thing will end up at the end of the month, but right now we have a nice, nice breakout in Tesla stock, and you can see just how strong and how far it's even gone from today. But again, the stock was trading around 215 today when we actually entered that spread, and because our price is, or the price that we paid is about 265, that puts our break even around 212.65, which is actually less than where the stock was trading today. So we actually ended up getting into this spread for less than the true value should have been for this option. So it was way undervalued, which is really kind of reflecting in the price that we already have now and the, or the profit that we already have now in Tesla. And so I'll go here to the chart of Tesla and you can see just on today, we made about 52 bucks on this trade for a one lot trade, that's not too bad. It's already trading up to 317 by the end of the day. So really, really favorable pricing in Tesla. And again, that's because where we actually entered our spread was both in the money at the time that we entered the order. Usually what we do is straddle the market with one option in the money and one option out of the money. But again, just the way that the options kind of uh, priced out here today ended up being a really, really good spread. And it was only kind of there if you just saw it early in the morning. So really lucky that we got that opportunity and we may end up closing this thing out at the end of the week if Tesla continues to rise higher. All right, some of the closing trades that we went over today are CVS. We had a very simple calendar spread in CVS anticipating that the stock would continue to rally just a little bit, head towards the 80 strike. Now we had the July-June calendar spread in CVS and the 80 calls, so trading both the 80 calls, one for June, one for July. But again, because we have that front month option in June, that's really our target date for when we want to exit that. And right now it's just not really moving too far too fast. We need a, a still a pretty good move in CVS before we get to expiration. So we went ahead and closed it back out, sold it back to the market for a $10 credit. So it took a $34 loss on this one, a very small loss on the trade. But again, CVS really didn't see the move up that we were anticipating. In fact, when we actually entered the spread, it started to even go down. So really just kind of bad timing uh, in picking our en entry and exit points. We had the stock rallying right towards CV uh, right towards that 80 strike, but then it just kind of took a turn for the worse and continued to move lower. That's gonna be a huge jump between now and expiration to move all the way back up to that 80 strike. So at this point with expiration just a couple days away, there's no point in letting this thing go all the way. Uh, we're gonna just save some money and, and exit out of the trade. 
Wells Fargo is one that we closed out today, very similar to Capital One and some other ones where we played kind of the down move in financials over the last week and a half. And so this is really that end result of closing out some of the trades that we had where we were just very, very bearish short term on some financials that have really had a huge rally up. Now, Wells Fargo is definitely one of those, and we just wanted to see it extend its decline just a little bit more as far as moving down. So we had a chance today to get out of our debit put spread originally. So we had originally bought the 55.50 put spread. Today we are able to sell that put spread back to the market at a higher price. So we took in a credit of one, or I'm sorry, of 310 and made a nice little $73 profit. Again, these are very small trades with these debit spreads. These are not intended to be huge, huge trades in your portfolio, right? You just wanna make them small. They're just a means to stay active in the market and pick some directional trades as we wait for higher implied volatility. Generally speaking, the market still has really, really low implied volatility. So we don't wanna be entering a lot of trades where we're selling premium. So all we can do at this point is trade some of these debit spreads, some of these calendars and diagonals, kind of stay long volatility a little bit and just pick some trades that might look good for us as far as uh, price action. Wells Fargo, definitely one that had made a top. We kind of traded it right around the top. I think we were about a day away from actually picking the top. And you can see the stock has moved down in the last couple of days really, really nicely away from our strikes, which gives us a great opportunity to take money off the table. Had a quick little profit in this. Originally, this is a 50-50 bet because of where we entered the debit spread. So what I originally look at as a 50-50 bet is now totally off the table, becomes a nice winner in our column and helps kind of offset any of the losers in the debit spread category. All right, so the other trade that I want to go over tonight is the call or the spread in SPY. So SPY was, oh, let me just readjust the screen here for you guys. SPY was one of those ones that we had originally sold this call spread. So this 190, 183 call spread in SPY was originally the spread that we had sold. And we went ahead and went back in and sold another put spread below the market but this time we made it a little bit bigger. So we actually took on a little bit more risk only to the downside by making the spread a little wider. Now usually what I say is if you're gonna hedge something with the spread and you wanna go ahead and sell the other side of the spread, you wanna even out the width of the strikes and you also wanna even out the number of contracts. Again, in this case it was a little bit different because we took in a little bit more premium by selling a couple extra on the put side. So as the market was rallying against our short call spread, which is a bad scenario, then we sold a put spread below the market so that we could potentially profit from that move up in the stock or at least cut our loss dramatically by selling this put spread against the market. And so we ended up doing that. Now overall, we took about $118 loss on the average of the contracts. So about four contracts, $118 loss on each of those four on average contracts overall. Now this is a ton better than if we were to do nothing and just sit there and let our 190, 193 call spread go all the way in the money. Because had we actually done that and this call spread expanded all the way to $3, we only bought it back for 270. But if it expanded all the way to $3 at expiration, we'd have over a $700 loss on our hands. So we basically took a trade that was gonna be a guaranteed $700 loser and cut that loss down to about 400 bucks. Now again, it's still a losing trade and I get that. But what people don't understand about this business and about trading for a living is that you've gotta be able to not only take trades that are small winners and expand them to big winners, but you've gotta take these trades that go completely against you and be able to manage them and adjust them in a way that cuts your loss dramatically and even sometimes giving you an opportunity to make a profit as we've shown before. But that to me is the essence of trading, is being able to take that trade that's a $700 loss and being strategic enough to adjust that down to a very small loss around $400. That I can do that all day long, and that's a great trade in my book. So I'm really happy about that. It ended up being two different orders to get out of the trade, obviously. We sold or bought back to the market our 190, 193 call spread at 270, and then bought back our short vertical put spread that had decayed in value, so helping us kind of bring in that premium that reduces our loss. We bought back that put spread for a 29 debit. So again, really, really good trade, I think, in our books, even though it ended up being a loser, it was much, much less of a loser than it could have been. Here's a chart of SPY, and you can see as soon as we entered the trade, our strikes were right around here at 190. So even though we did get the move in implied volatility we were looking for, where the decline in implied volatility for SPY, we did not get the directional move in the stock 
and just generally just moved right against us the entire time. So really had nothing to do with uh, you know the market and the market just moved against us and that's going to happen. But again, we have to be able to be nimble and make adjustments to the trade to reduce our loss or even keep an opportunity for a profit. So as always, I hope you guys really enjoy these videos. If you have any comments or questions about these trades or any of the trades we have on currently, please go ahead and ask them right below in the membership section here. I'll get back to all of those tonight or tomorrow before the open and happy trading.